Hey, Taylor. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicate Radio. Taylor, how about a self-scouting report on the new quarterback at Arkansas? <laughs> a self-scouting report? Of, I would say just having fun, you know, just taking everything in, being a sponge, you know, whether it's on the field with the playbook, with the team, or off the field, you know, I'm always eating, <laughs> always having fun, whether it's, you know, I just went mini golfing, um, or just hanging out with the team and hanging out with uh, my teammates and stuff like that. So just taking everything in. Right side, third row. AJ Jackson, how has he developed so far and what's your relationship been like with him? My relationship with KJ, he, we're really close, you know. Um, I walk, we came in at the same time, and, you know, I'm older, so I, I took the role of, you know, showing him the ropes. You know, it's my fourth year, and I just wanted to be that leader uh, and that, you know, that person to look up to, you know, that that I would I, that I would want, you know, when he was, when I was a freshman, you know. So um, I tell him all the time, he's, he's ahead of where I was freshman year, just getting coached by one of the best uh, coordinators in, in the country. And I was like, don't ever take that for granted. You know, when he talks, listen and take notes, you know, cause you, I'm like, what you do with freshman, sophomore year, you're gonna like lean back on. You're gonna like the things in, on and off the field, you're gonna look back and, and, and grow from that. So that's why I tell him all the time, take everything in, it's a freshman, you know, so, so yeah. Left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX uh, in College Station. Taylor, um, why, why did you choose Arkansas, and, and, and why do you feel like you are a good fit um, with this program right right now? I would say first, I had a relationship previously with Coach Petrino. He was my first offer coming out of high school, and um, you know, hit the transfer portal. He called me, you know, every every morning. You know, sometimes I wasn't up, and he would text me. <laughs> and but I I took that as you know that that meant a lot to me. You know, he made me you know a priority, and that you know. Um, that meant a lot, and we we met before uh, for about two, three hours, you know, talking ball, but not even talking ball, like talking about Arkansas and how how it is and stuff like that. And you know, I took the visit. That was my first um, official visit because I was a COVID baby. Uh, so um, just the vision that he had and Coach Pitt had, you know, I was I'm truly grateful um, for the belief and the vision that they have and you know I felt like um, just the opportunity uh, with the weapons that we have offensively and a great defense um, I feel like you know the sky's the limit for us you know the only stopping the only people stopping us is ourselves and that's what we're trying to mitigate and just trying to continue uh, through the summer is just to uh, continue what we did in the spring and uh, just to grow our chemistry and to grow our um, chemistry on and off the field and to grow our understanding of the offense. Right side, front row. Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. I want to ask you about one of your targets out there, Luke Hawes. Well, can you talk a little, bit, a little bit about your relationship with him, both on and off the field? How, how good a player is he? My relationship with him is really close. We are, like, on the same, like, um, I would say row in the locker room. So we're always talking. We we'll always, like, get uh, in the locker room. I like, at similar times, we're always, like, one of the first ones in there. So we're always talking. And I'll we'll always be like, hey, Luke. And he's like, Hey, Taylor. So it's it's really cool. Um, his feel for the game is is unmatched. Like he he just now recently uh, started playing like football. Like he's I think he said freshman or sophomore year of high school he started playing football and that's that's crazy, you know. But it's, it really speaks volumes how you know talented he is and how um, dedicated he is to the to this sport. And you know we. We was just joking about, you know, <laughs> we had our the receivers um, out, and he was like, man, I love football. I love it. So it's definitely um, cool to see just everybody, not even just Luke, like everybody's just loving, you know, to be in the facility and loving to work. So Left side, back row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Landon said that you won the team over in your first week, and I'm just curious <laughs> the kind of stuff you did to, to win. As a transfer portal quarterback, like what, what kind of stuff do you need to do early on to show uh, that you belong with, with, a, with a new team? I'll say first be yourself. You know, don't be anybody that you're not. Don't try to be anybody you're not because, you know, they'll, like everybody will see right through it. 
you know. Um, and, you know, the first thing I wanted to make sure, you know, uh, is I'm going to be the first one there and the last one out, you know. And when it's time to work, it's time to work. And when it's not, you know, I'm laid back, having, having fun, joking around, you know, just, you know, I call it being with the boys, being with the guys. And just um, – Building that trust, and that's all. That's that's really is is building building trust and camaraderie uh, between the team. Because you know, I have I'm I tell them I have great. I'm grateful for them for just open, open, uh, open, open. Whoa, opening me with open arms. Oh, there you go. Because <laughs> um, just me being from Boise, uh, just coming from Idaho. Um, that's what you know. Uh, and meant the world to me. Um, so, so yeah. Okay, three final questions here, here, and here. Okay. Hey, Taylor, Parker Abel's Five News Northwest Arkansas. You're taking over from a three-year starter in K.J. Jefferson who kind of became a fan favorite in Fayetteville. What's it going to be like taking over from him, and have you had a chance to talk to him at all, kind of get advice from him? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm just, you know, we're, like focused on just being myself. Uh, and taking care of, you know, each day, being the best version of myself each and every day. And I feel like, you know, the rest um, will take care of itself. And, you know, uh, with KJ, you know, I wish him, um, you know, the, all the best. You know, I already know he's going to, you know, do good, great, I mean, do great things there. And, you know, he has a great opportunity there. So, you know, wish all the best for him. Third row. Taylon, how do you feel like your game fits in and maybe is complemented by a, a Bobby Petrino-led offense? Um, you can just – he doesn't even have to say anything. You just look at his resume and just turn on the film of, you know, just the different quarterbacks he had um, throughout his um, coaching career, you know, and just the development that that he has. And just the six, seven months that I've been, like, uh, coaching, um, being coached by him, uh, it's, it's crazy just how much knowledge and how much understanding that I got just from, the, just from talking to him and uh, just taking everything in. Final question on the aisle. Yeah, Taylor Evan Camico, Pig Trail Nation. Kind of two things. The first is I know you and Andrew Armstrong are accidentally wearing the same shoe brand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who who uh, went for that first? And then I'll ask the second one. We was actually about to wear the same, like, shoe. And I was like, but, hey, great. My, I know you see the chemistry. You see the chemistry? So that's, what we, <laughs> that's what we've been building. Um, I just – he just asked, what are you going to – what are you going to wear? And I was like, I'm going to wear this with the, with the shoes. And he's like, oh, I'm wearing the shoes. And I was like – well, um, looks like uh, I'm going to wear these. You know, it's perfect. I got the red, the white, and it's perfect. You know, Arkansas, Arkansas red, so go Hawks. And more importantly, being from Texas, for you, what does it mean that you'll be able to be a part of the renewed rivalry between Texas and Arkansas? Uh, you know, it's pretty cool uh, just to be in that atmosphere of, of Texas versus, versus Arkansas. Uh, everybody, talk, everybody talks about the game when they came the, they came here and, you know, they rushed the field and all that. So just the passion that both fan bases have, you know, that's one of the reasons why I came to Arkansas, just just the passion, just when Arkansas football's on, everybody in the state's watching, you know, and that's what I don't I don't take for granted, you know. Uh, that's why we're working so hard. That's why, you know, uh, I'm doing my process and um, taking it day by day. So I don't, I don't take anything for granted. Thanks very much. Good job. Thank you. Hey, man, and AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. What has to be done for Arkansas to get more Ws and from the defensive perspective? Mm -hmm. uh, really just finish close games, you know. Uh, it starts back in January. Uh, workouts, everything like that, you just got to execute, finish those. Uh, it's about all the little details. So really in those tight games, we got to do all we can to prevent them from getting first downs. And uh, – Really just dominate line of scrimmage, uh, play as a unit, and uh, get the job done. Left side, back row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Welcome back. Uh, Thank it's, you. Uh, uh, it, uh, the last season, the, the ending of last season was, was difficult for you guys. What was it like in the locker room as a leader, holding the team together and, and, and keeping guys focused on the task? Yeah, no, that, that's when it gets tough. And, uh, I mean, that's when you need a lot of leaders. And I think we got that this year. I think uh, overall there's a, a bunch of us who – can really keep the team together when adversity hits. Because, I mean, even, you could even – I mean, we can go undefeated this season. Adversity's going to hit at some point. So, uh, we just got to stay together and 
find ways to, to bring other guys on the team up and, uh, I mean, really just battle back that adversity. Right side, fourth row. Hey, Landon, Michael Brauner, WNSP in Mobile. He talked about leadership, and you talked about leadership with Coach Pittman specifically. When a season ends the way it did, how does he go about getting you guys to buy back in new and old players from, from the last year's team? Uh, really, when I mean, you got enough players on the team that realize it's not just on one person. It's not just on Coach Pittman. It's not just on an offense, a defense. It's the whole thing. I mean, there's ways all of us could have been better last year, and uh, I feel like a lot of guys on our team understood that and kind of accepted that and were like, yeah, we got to be better. And, uh, I mean, we all just realized we had to be better, and I feel like we've done all the things we need to do in this off season to, to really better our season. Oh, here, left side, third row. Hey, uh, Landon and Courtney Machani, TSTV Sports out of Austin, Texas. Uh, in high school football news, uh, four-star recruit Lan uh, Lance uh, mm -hmm. had re um, went to uh, the Texas Longhorns. How does it feel for the Texas Longhorns joining the SEC and you have a brotherly rivalry with your brother? Yeah, no, it's it's big time. Uh, I think Texas is a really, a really great school. Uh, I mean, they're powerhouse football team every single season. And SEC is the, the best level of football at the college level. And, uh, I mean, I feel like they, they're really going to make our conference stronger. And, uh, I mean, I, I basically told Lance, I mean, that I, I love their coaching staff. That's a, that's a great school for you to play for. <laughs> we'll go back on the fourth row. Landon, you really took over that Alabama game mm -hmm. last year. You guys were about a hair away from completing a comeback and winning. Alabama had some offensive line issues early in the season. Is mm -hmm. that something you can kind of feel from your side, or is it just, hey, I came out and played my best game possible today? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, I, I just studied film and uh, found a few weaknesses and uh, tried capitalizing on those weaknesses. I feel like overall, I mean, they got a, they, they had one of the best units in the country last year. They just had a, a few little problems, but every every team has problems at some point. But I mean, phenomenal players. I mean, Tyler Booker's a, a great a great player, and uh, overall their whole unit. I mean, they had J.C. Latham last year. Uh, I mean, their whole unit's really dominant offensive line, and I feel like they're going to be just as good this year. So, uh, I mean, I think I, ha I had a good game, but I gotta I gotta make that into multiple games throughout the year and put up more games like that to be who I think I should be. Left side on the aisle. Jacob Morris, Pig Trail Nation. Kind of piggybacking off that question, Landon. You know, all three of you guys here today are from Texas. Obviously, you have the brotherly connection. Just how excited are you for the Arkansas-Texas game to be back on the schedule and to be in Fayetteville this year? I'm very excited. Uh, talking to some former, not former players, but players on the team who were here for that last Arkansas-Texas game, they were like, man, that environment was something else. So uh, I'm excited for it. I'm ready for that game. I know uh, a few players on the on Texas's team, so it'll be a it'll be a good rivalry uh, to continue happening. Left side in the back, uh, Dan Pack, ESPN 1067. What what are some of the things uh, Taylor Green has done to win over the locker room as a transfer quarterback? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. He won the locker room the first week he was here. He he came in and just his sense of urgency, his uh. I mean, he, he has all the, the traits to be, I mean, a leader for a big-time uh, SEC program. And, uh, I mean, that dude just he, – he goes to work every day, first one in, last one out, and uh, does all he can to perfect his craft. And he doesn't just worry about himself. He's, he really wants to perfect his teammates as well. I mean, he makes – he's one of those players that makes players around him better. So, Left side on the off third row. Yeah, Joseph Duffy, TSTV Sports in Austin. Being a Razorback, you have the opportunity to play uh, in two different stadiums, two different mm -hmm. home stadiums, that is. Can you speak about how unique that is, like, as part of the Arkansas football program? And yeah. do you have a preference for a stadium at all? Oh, yeah, no, it, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, we go down to Little Rock for a game every year, and uh, I think it's great for the state. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of families from South Arkansas that, I mean, just don't have the time or the – the money to drive up to Northwest Arkansas to watch us play, or able to able to go go to Little Rock Stadium and watch us, and um, I mean, really be there to support us. And uh, but yeah, I mean, love love our stadium up in Fayetteville. There's nothing like it, and uh, ready to get to it. Stay on the third row. Uh, kind of going off different stadiums. The the mm -hmm. A&M Arkansas game has always been, or mm -hmm. since you've been there, in that uh, that neutral site yeah. in Dallas. 
Do you enjoy doing playing in those kind of venues and having the neutral site? And you know, this is the last year of it, so maybe you won't see yeah. it, but in the future they'll get to move back to. Oh, honestly, my my preference would be no neutral sites. I'm I'm big on. I really like. Uh, home games and I, I love away games I either love my I either love the crowd hating me or loving me you know I don't like the the mixed vibe you know <laughs> so uh I'm big on uh I love I love going somewhere and running out the tunnel and getting booed it makes you work a little bit harder but I also love running out the tunnel and just seeing my whole fan base so I prefer it like that than neutral sites front row Michael Cottle out of Baton Rouge. I know you're a defensive guy, but what are you seeing with Bobby in the in the offense and Taylor? Yeah. I mean, does it look a lot different? And just is he's such a big quarterback? I mean, mm -hmm. you're used to that with KJ, but does that yeah. change the game? No, nah, no, nah, that he he fits in the Coach Petrino's offense great, and uh, Coach Petrino as a coach just pushes those guys, and I mean they, they they're working. So uh, I'm so I'm really I'm really glad we got him. Uh, I feel like Taylor fits great in the offense. Uh, He's the type of quarterback that I feel like every team Coach Petrino's had that's been very successful. He's had a quarterback that plays the way Taylor plays, and uh, I think that'll that's one thing I'm really excited to see this season. Final question in the back. Oh. Hey, uh, Cam Durr, WFF 48 in Huntsville. You guys are heading to Auburn this season, played mm -hmm. at, at Alabama last year. As far as environment goes, which stadium or, or fan base is harder to play in front of? Uh, it's a tough question. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I like playing at both. I don't know which one to say is really tougher because I per, I've performed better at Alabama's, but at the same time, I feel like Alabama's fan base is a little a little bit more wild. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I enjoy both stadiums. Uh, I really like playing at both stadiums. They're much better than a few that I've played at. So, uh, really excited for that game. Great job. Thank you very much. We'll take you, you next year if you want. <laughs> Do you get the feeling that the season's getting closer? Are you getting the itch? And how have you guys practiced so far? Oh, it's, it's been great. You know, the team camaraderie, the, the player-led, you know, it, it's been very fun, exciting. Um, we, we've been working extremely hard this summer, going day by day, you know, getting closer to fall camp. The only thing we can do is just focus on the next day and getting better at doing that. Right here in the front row. Hey, Dallas. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Dallas, tell the people about a Bobby Petrino offense. What's so unique for the wide receivers, and how do you like your new quarterback transfer from Boise State? Man, getting coached by Coach Petrino has been great. You know, he's been helping us with the plays. You know, we plan, you know, try to be – we're going to very try to be explosive this year. And, you know, with Taylor Green coming in, the leader he is, you know, he's 6'7". You know, looking at him, you can already think he is a leader, you know. So, he's been great, you know, talking with the players, talking with the team. It's been, it's been exciting. We'll go here in the front row on the right. Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Uh, I want to ask you about Luke Hawes. What, what does he bring to the offense? I know he had a short, shortened season last year, but as a young player, what can he do to help the offense? The most the, – the most – the biggest, the biggest word I can say about Luke Haas is consistent. He, he's the, one of the most consistent players on the team with his hands, with his route running, with his ability to learn the plays and, and stay locked in. You know, Luke, we, like I said, we've seen him. Like, even with the short spurt of games he, he's played in, just imagine if he, you know, played all the whole season. You know, he, he's been great. He's still young. And for him to play the, at the ability that he's playing at his age is astounding. Left side in the back row. Good morning, uh, Noah Gross with KXN in Austin. I know as a Texas native, you probably know all about UT and all things like that. Is the game against Texas something family and friends are talking about a little bit? And what do you kind of expect with everything you he you, you've heard about this rivalry starting back up? Uh, I, I know the last time they played them, it was like one of the seventh most, like the t uh, attendance there was extremely high. So I feel like, you know, coming back, with this year, you know, we got Bobby Petrino back. It might, it might even jump that, you know. So, I, I'm just ready to play. I'm just ready to play them as well. You know, it's going to be a very fun, fun game early, 11 a.m. game. Uh, right side on the aisle. Yeah, Andrew, Courtney Mims, Pig Trail Nation, you decided to come back to Arkansas for another season. What went into that decision, and, and what makes you confident in this Razorbacks team? You know, I, we, were, we were extremely confident last year, and, and looking at how the team was last year, with those close losses that we had, you know, I, I feel like we, we can build on top of that. And 
with me, I feel like if I would have left, you know, I would just been, I would just left, like try to, you know, try to get to the NFL and things like that. But I feel like it was unfinished business here, and I feel like we 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 can do something extremely great here, and that's why I came back. Left side, the back. What were the toughest parts of making the jump from A and M Commerce to the SEC, and, and, and what were some things that, that came easily? I said this, uh, one time in an interview last year, man. Them workouts, that first day workout when I first got to uh, Arkansas, I almost, I almost called my mom and asked, "Can I go? Is there a way I can go back to Commerce?" Because <laughs> them, them workouts was extremely, man. That first week, that first week for everybody is just, you gotta, you gotta be mentally tough. Because if your, if your, if your mental isn't there, it's gonna be one of the most hardest things, you know, you you've ever went to. And I have, a, I have a like a way of making up words. So I'm gonna say one of the one of the hardest things I've ever I've ever went through when I first got here. So, is the mental part of the game as difficult as the physical part, or is it more difficult? M- mental mentally is one of the most I want to say 80, 80, 90 percent of the of the game. You know, you can work out, you can do all those things, but if you're not mentally tough, if you're not mentally there on the field, you know. You got to think about what plays you got. You're going through. You can be tired, and you got to think about what type of route you got to run. Your dip, like so. I feel like mental is one of the most like prestigious things when it comes to the sport of football. Front row, right here in Dallas. Over here, hey Dallas. You played Alabama, a very tough game last year. Why? Why did that happen? Why was Alabama a tough game? No, no. Why did you play them so close last year? Oh, when we. Like I said, we played. It was a lot of games that we had. Like it was one score games, and that we just didn't finish in. And I feel like you know we could compete with anybody in the nation last year. It's just that uh, the finishing aspect of it. Like I said, we had a lot of one score games that we could have, you know, that could have went our way, but didn't. And it could have changed the season around, like with, with our confidence and things like that. So I feel like we played. You know, we just played to the best of our ability. Right side. If you don't mind, one more question about Luke. What's that neat relationship about him having a twin brother on the team? And what do you see from an, as an outsider about those two? How do they get along? Man, they they love each other. You know, they, that's that's the twin brother love you see from a lot of twin brothers. You know, they work out hard. They're extremely, you know, they're vocal leaders and things. So I feel like you know, with Luke and Dylan coming in helping the team, you know, it, it just builds on, builds on to the team camaraderie. Left side again. What, what can you tell us about what else Arkansas has at the wide receiver position and anybody that you think could really break through this year, anybody who's really impressed you with the work they've done this offseason? Definitely. You know, we have Tyrone Broden, 6'7", fast dude on the team. You don't see that a lot. You know, he, he's good in getting down in his breaks. He's good in catching the ball in traffic. He's good at going up and catching the ball. You know, he's been extremely, extremely, extremely locked in this year. We also have Isaiah Centania, Jadon Wilson, you know, Davion Doldra, C.J. Brown, a lot of young guys as well, Dasmond James, you know, Jordan Anthony. Like I said, Jordan Anthony, like we, we, we talked about the NCAA game, and he is an absolute cheat code because he has a 98 speed, and you could just say down to hook and just throw the ball, and he's just going to run under it and catch it. So, you know, but I feel like our receiving room as a whole has been, like, it's been great. With the tough losses last year, what was the message during that tough time, and how's the message going into this year? Next, next day, the next day is, is, was the message. You know, we 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 can lose a game, but it's, the game is lost. Like there's nothing you can do about. You can't harp on. You can't be sad about it. Just like if you if I if I drop a ball in the game, like me getting mad about dropping the ball isn't going to do anything but mess up my mental during the game. So if I drop a ball, I just got to say next play because that next play can be a 90-yard catch. But I just dropped a five-yard catch, which could have turned into a 15-yard. So I just gotta, you just got to stay focused and, and keep, your, keep your mind on the swivel. Another question on the left side. Uh, Arkansas is, I believe, their first conference road game this year is at jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. Uh, you, you weren't on the team the last time Arkansas went to Auburn, uh, but I, I imagine you've heard about playing at jordan Hare before. What, what have you heard about making the trip to Auburn? Uh, I haven't heard a lot about like going down there and playing, but you know, like I said, we had that long stretch last year, the five away games, you know. So with that being my first year in the SEC, you know, I'm kind of, I'll be kind of used to, you know, taking the travel and playing in the away games. So I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Anything else for Andrew? Got a couple minutes. He's a good talker. Okay, left side. (laughs) 
Obviously, to get the ball, you have to have Taylor Green standing. How can you, or what can you say about the offensive line and how they've improved from last year to this year to make sure that you're getting the targets that you deserve? Man, they, the O-line is one of the most together O-lines I've ever seen. You know, they come in together on the weekend, seven days a week, you know, in the training room together, in the, in the, in the pool together, you know, doing rehab together, and they're not even hurt. They just in there doing, you know, just doing rehab to, to make themselves better. And making themselves better is going to, you know, make the team better, make the offense better, and also make the defense better because that defense has to go up against the O-line. So I feel like the O-line has took a, a dramatic step. We have one final question here in the front row. Dallas, what can you say about your transfer quarterback? What, what can you tell us about him that people will be excited when he steps on the field? Taylor Green is – like, he's one of the most happy guys I've been around. You know, he's ready to play. He's ready to – he lo he loves when he messes up because it helps him – it builds him. You know, it builds him. And he's, he's, that, he's that leader that, that a team needs. You know, everybody can go to him, ask him a question about a route, and he knows everything. He knows he, – you can tell he's been in the playbook, and he's, he, he's locked in. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you.